Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to start to make a boss fight and it will have the basic of a boss fight so just like other boss fights will be uh, choreographed so the bo the boss will have a certain movement that will do that will loop and at a certain point the boss will be vulnerable to hit and we'll be able to hit him and as soon as the life of the boss goes into zero we'll be able to kill it so without further to explain let me create here a an empty game object and name it boss battle and because the boss battle will not only hold the boss but some other stuff like the points uh, some points that the boss has to go to we need that over there uh, and I'm going to put this at zero zero and create here a new empty game object in it that should be that will be over here so I'm going to give it a, a something that I can see see that for instance that red that yellow thing and then I'm going to put it over here so this is one of will be one of the points that the boss can go to and now copy that point and another point should be over here and another point should be here on the top so these three points are points that the boss will need to to do his stuff now I'm going to grab the boss uh, the boss sprite which is actually a robot so I'm going to drag the robot into the sprites folder and do what we always do here we have the robots and I'm going to slice them and I'm going to put here multiple points and into the sprite editor I'm going to slice it in a 18 by 18 grid because that's the size that we did it slice apply and as you can see we have here multiple sprites but we we are actually going, only going to use these two anyway that's it apply And if I drag one of them into the scene, it looks like it's really small. So let's see the size that we want it to be. Let's see, maybe 10 pixels to it is a bit too small. You know, a boss has to be kind of scary, and that's not scary at all. So let's see, 5. Okay, 5 seems nice. And But I don't want that sprite. I want this sprite over here. So delete that one, and this will be the boss. So you can even name it here boss and put it under the boss battle game object like here and let's add some colliders to the boss so add component circle collider and that one kind of fits exactly where we wanted it so like so and let's also add a box collider to the bottom part so like that add it oops and like that Bring this down a bit and give it also a rigid by 2D. Oh, and by the way, let's freeze its rotation. And now we have here the default boss. And the way that this boss is going to, to work is that the boss will go into this point first, where the boss will throw something. And we have actually some projectile over here that we did a long time ago. You know, it's just a circle collider with a rigid body 2D. And a destroy time script. So we're going to use that for our advantage. Anyways, let's create a script for the boss. So new script, boss script, create an ad. And like I said, this is going to all be choreographed. So when you want to do choreographed stuff, you use Coroutines. So let's use coroutines. I'm going to put here I enumerator boss like so and put here in the start start coroutine boss fight boss just like that and now let's start to program our boss. So this boss will have three attacks. And the first thing that I want to do is to make the boss go into this point over here, turn turn this direction, turn into this direction and shoot stuff out of him. 
So to do that, first we have to give these points to the script. So public transforms array uh, spots. Oops, and we have something that's a problem because we haven't put here a yield return new null like that. Okay. It requests four points, three points. So the point that we want to go first is the point one. Then we know that the point zero is is the one on the other side, and the point two will be on the air like that. And that will be fine by now. So just like we did in the zombie, we want the the boss to go into that one point x, and while the y doesn't matter, so I'm going to put here the first attack. So while the transform dot position dot x of the boss is different from the spots uh, point in the zero position dot x, then we want the boss to walk into that point. So as we did with the zombie, we use the move towards function that Unity gave us. So make the transform dot position be equal to the vector two dot move towards, and here we put the transform dot position, which is the current position, and the target position will be just like we did with the zombie, new vector two, and the x will be the x of the spot point. So dot position dot x, and the y will be the transform dot position dot y meaning it won't change much and it won't matter and now here we put the speed so speed and put here a public float called speed and because right now this doesn't have a yield return null as soon as this get as soon as this started the loop it will only get out of the loop when this was equal to true and we wouldn't even see the animation we have to put this here so that it just walks a bit every frame, like that. So now let's see if the boss is walking into this point. So if I play, the boss should gradually walk into that point. And as you can see, it isn't walking to that point. And that's because the speed is zero. So if I put the speed equal to something, you see that the boss rapidly goes into that point. So let's see what's a good speed. Let's see, 0.5 is fine. Let's see. Okay, that seems fine for now. If we need to change, we will. Okay, once the boss has reached that, that point, what we want to do is to change direction. So transform dot local scale dot x equals new vector 2 and rotate its x and its y will stay the same. Okay. And after that, we can wait a second or two. So yield return new wait for seconds and like one second. And after that, we're going to make him throw some projectiles from these two holes. So first we have to create the holes, the position of the holes. So on the boss, right click, create new, create empty and create empty again. And name this point one and this point two. And in the boss, let's put here public transforms array called holes. And what have we done? Oh, well, and this is only transform the total scale. My bad. Because you can change the dot x or dot y alone, so that's how it has to be. And now here in the script, we have here the the holes, and we're going to fill them. So the one of the holes will be this point, and the other hole will be that point. And we have to put these points in the correct place. So this will be in here, and this point will be in here, like that. And now I want to shoot some projectiles out of those holes. So 
for now I want to I will make them um, shoot always uh, six projectiles but you could make him shoot the number of projectiles that you want anyways while I is smaller than six you will shoot projectiles and when I is equal to six you will stop shooting projectiles and because you don't want them to shoot projectiles all at the same time I'm going to put here yield return new wait for seconds and you can make like 0.7 so seconds between each projectile and now here we want to instantiate the projectile in one of the holes so I'm going to put here the public game object projectile save and I'm going to drag that, that projectile into there so going to the boss and you have to fill that point over there so the prefabs we had made this projectile over here a long time ago like and like I said it's just a, a circle collider with a rigid body and it's kinematic with a and it destroys after 10 seconds and it has attack deadly so that you can actually kill the player so we wanted to throw that and let's let's start instantiating those projectiles so instantiate the projectile at and that what what will be the position well the position it will be one of the holes and because you want it to be random I'm going to put here holes and as you may recall arrays work this way so you have to put here the index of the hole so it will be hole 1 or hole 0 and to make this random just put here random dot range and as you can see it has two ways of working with it works with floats and with ints and with ints you have to put the value the minimum value and the number after the maximum value like so and this will make a number an int between 0 and 1 and make the the rotation be equal to a quaternion dot identity with that then we also want to give some velocity to the to the projectile so we're going to make what we did in some tutorials also which is making them be equal to game object uh, bullet for instance and because that's a game that's an object we have to force it to be a game object like that and now we want to make the bullet we're going to access the bullet which is the this projectile and we want to access the rigid body 2D and give it some speed so bullet dot get component rigid by 2D dot velocity and we want it to be equal to vector 2 dot left because the bullet will always be shot onto the left times a certain speed I'm going to just put 5 you can make like I said you can put here a public variable so that you can change it but it won't be much precise today and now let's see if this is working so there's a little bit of mistake oh I forgot to put here the, the transform this is a transform we want a transform not position like, like so and now let's see so this should go into the point and then shoot those projectiles when it reaches there so it goes onto the point and it starts uh, shooting projectiles but as you can see they are instantly disappearing and that's because this script over here is is not recent and we actually made a, a, a recent script that doesn't have this mistake so add component and the recent script is destroy by time and it will destroy after some seconds so just put there and to show you what this script does it just destroys this game object after some time so right now that won't happen so if I hit play you'll see that the bullets get instantiated and if they hit the player the player starts dying and that's basically it 